I'm Liz Faubless. Thank you for joining us this morning. Tonight on Currents, news you will hear about on our show with the faith-based perspective you expect. Here's a quick recap of the top stories that we're going to present for you tonight. I'm going to have the latest details on the new kidnappings in Nigeria. We told you last night that the Islamist group Boko Haram has kidnapped another 60 women and young girls from the northern part of the country. So we're going to get you all caught up on the latest developments there. And also, remember in our broadcast yesterday, we told you about a group of nuns that said that they're willing to care for a priest convicted of killing a nun. Well, now a lawyer for that priest says, no way, the Little Sisters of the Poor have not agreed to care for his client. That full update tonight. Well, we're all ready, are you? It is literally days away. This Saturday, June 28th, Bishop Nicholas DiMarzio ordaining 13 men, the biggest class of new priests in the country at the newly renovated co-cathedral of St. Joseph, His Excellency, saying that these 13 men represent the great diversity of ethnicity, life experience, and socioeconomic background of the Church of Brooklyn and Queens, yet all share the one desire to serve as a priest. Our Katie Breidenbach found out that Deacon Greg McElhenney can't wait to become a father. He always wanted to have a family, but when a priest told him that priests need all the characteristics that a dad needs, he started to consider it. He calls children a gift, and he is ready to minister to them. Now, one of his classmates, Deacon Carlos Velasquez, is himself proof that this outreach to children is crucial. He remembers that when he was about five or six years old, he would admire his pastor saying the mass, and he really went to some great lengths to be part of it. I wanted to be an altar boy, and I, 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 I wanted to be up there with him, helping him, um, and uh, he used to always say, no, I couldn't, because I hadn't received my first Holy Communion yet. So Sunday after Sunday, I used to beg him and beg him. I used to start crying at the doors of the church, uh, and uh, he eventually just gave in. <laughs> So uh, he said, yeah, okay, you can do it. So uh, they took me to the back of the sacristy and they measured me up in one of the cassocks uh, and um, they had to cut one up because they, they didn't have one my size. I was a little kid. So, uh, but I can remember I was the incense bearer. I used to hold the incense for many years and then, because <laughs> that's all I could do. <laughs> Oh, persistence pays off. Katie has officially spoken to all 13 men who will be ordained this week. They all made a special request of the people of the Diocese of Brooklyn and Queens. Katie's going to share that request tonight, so you simply must tune in. All right, so you want to know what is happening around the diocese? Well, I want to tell you, and I will. This Friday, a Mass at St. Peter Claver in Bedford-Stuyvesant in honor of the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Mass is at 11 a.m. Over at St. Sebastian in Woodside, World Day of Prayer for the Sanctification of Priests. That's on June 27th, and it's at 6 p.m. Mass, followed by Holy Hour and Reflections. All are welcome, and this, of course, a fitting Mass to attend ahead of the ordination Saturday. At St. Athanasius in Bensonhurst, this Saturday, a healing Mass in honor of St. Peter and Paul. That will be at 5.30 p.m., the Mass being said for all illnesses and sickness. And Good Shepherd in Marine Park, holding a Rosary for Life Day retreat Saturday, June 28th. The day begins at 8.30, and the retreat goes on until 4, and will be led by Bishop Frank Caggiano. And it was so successful the first time, Queen of Angels in Sunnyside doing it again. They're going to hold their second annual picnic June 28th, 12 to 5, in the schoolyard, complete with food, carnival, games, rides, face painting, and raffles. Pope Francis and St. Athanasius share a common theme. Pope Francis kicking off his last general audience of the season with a visit to the sick and the elderly at Paul VI Hall. Perché con questo tempo fra caldo e la possibilità di pioggia era più prudente che loro rimanessero là. Ma loro sono collegati con noi tramite il massi schermo. E così siamo uniti nella stessa udienza. All right, more tonight on the Holy Father's call for prayers for the sick and the elderly. Meantime, you're all caught up on all the latest news we're going to be covering for you tonight, news you will only see here on Currents. But you definitely want to keep it here. We're going to switch over to St. James Cathedral Basilica, where Monsignor Strinkowski will celebrate the noontime mass.